Hey, this is Chris with Record Talk, so I haven't done one of these in a while, but I think I'm going to go back and try to do some more of these ranking the albums, um, where I go through a discography and rank them from my least favorite to my favorite. And so who are we doing today? Hold our fingers the right way. We're doing L7 today, even though I'm wearing a My Morning Jacket t-shirt for no apparent reason. Yeah. All right, that's just for thumbnail purposes. So L7 have a total of seven studio albums I'm going to rank. One of them is sometimes counted as an EP, but I'm going to count it as a full-length studio album because I want to. So let's get into it. So my, and I found that the least favorite and my two favorites were the easiest and the four in the middle were the ones that I had a little bit of difficulty in figuring out exactly where to put them. So, easily my least favorite is going to be Slap Happy uh, from 1999, Wax Tadpole Records. Um, so, this was after L7 um, had lost the major label deal with Slash. Um, second album that the bass player Jennifer Finch was gone. This is really them on their last legs because, I mean, they broke up after this album. It didn't get back together for about 15 years. And really, I mean, it's just not a very good album. Um, there's not really much to recommend about it. Um, and you can kind of see that they were petering out. Um, so that's my number seven. My number six is going to be the one that I think is going to get me some grief. Because I'm going to guess that most people who would rank an L7 discography would rank this higher than number six. But I'm going to rank Hungry for Stink from 1994 as my number six. And yes, I got the recent Bloodshot Red um, issue. And my real issue with this album, and this is an issue with most L7 albums, is I think L7 has suffered a lot more than a lot of bands from shitty production of their albums. And this one in particular, and this one doesn't really make sense because this was 1994. They were on a major label, um, and they were probably at the their, their peak of their career at this point. Um, there's a few good songs on here. Andres, which is the first song on side one, is pretty good. I think the rest of side one is not that good at all. Um, and that's another thing, is that um, sometimes the songwriting, especially with these, bottom, these albums towards the bottom, is pretty spotty. I tend to not like the Jennifer Finch songs um, and the Donita songs and the Susie songs are better. Um, the second side is a little bit better. Uh, Stuck Here Again, Fuel My Fire, Freak Magnet. Those three songs are pretty good. But um, So they produced it with Garth Richardson, who had done work with people like Rage Against the Machine and the Melvins. And this is way, I think this is way too slow sounding. I want my L7 to be a bit faster. Um, I don't want it L7 to be as, as sludgy as this sounded. Um, and um, yeah, I, this should have been a lot better. My number five is going to be their uh, full length reunion album called Scatter the Rats from 2019. So, produced and mixed by Norm Block. Don't really about know about Norm Block. It's on sort of a Coke bottle green, which is one of my favorite uh, vinyl colors, for whatever that's worth. Uh, Burn Baby, um, Ouija Board Lies, Scatter the Rats. There's some pretty cool songs on here. Um, but it's probably not going to be one of these albums that... When I'm sitting around going, wow, I'm going to listen to an L7 album. Probably not going to come back to this one all that often. My number four happens to be the only one I don't have on vinyl. Would be their debut, the self-titled L7, uh, which came out on Epitaph Records. Uh, songs like Bite the, Bite the Wax Told Pull, Cat of Nine Tails, Metal Stampede. So they, this is probably their most metal-sounding album. Um, 
maybe their most punk sounding album. Um, this is the only album that Roy Kutsky, um, so yes, a guy in L7, was the drummer rather than D. Plakis. And I'll say that I definitely prefer D. Plakis as a drummer. Um, the, the production by Brett Gurowitz uh, from Bad Religion is not, again, not that, not that awesome. But I can forgive this one for so-so production more than Hungry for Stink because this was a first album by an unknown band. My number three is going to be 1997's um, The Beauty Process Triple Platinum, which I actually like quite a bit more than I like Hungry for Stink. So this has been the third in their final record on Slash, uh, produced by Rob Cavallo. Um, and you could probably make the argument that the better songs on Hungry for Stink are better than any of these songs. Uh, the Beauty Process, Non-Existent Patricia is a pretty good song. Lorenza Giada Alessandra is kind of weird, off the wagon. Um, but... This is just as an album is a lot better. Um, there's there's not any really total terrible filler on this album the way I felt with a couple of the other albums. And so this would be um, my favorite of sort of the middle part of their catalog. And then my top two L7 albums are probably not going to be a surprise. These are probably pretty standard choices. I had both of them on CD back in the day. So my number two is going to be their album on Sub Pop, 1990 Smell the Magic. I realized that it was originally released as a six song EP. I got the nine song CD and then the, uh, the reissue on vinyl. I mean, don't, don't, they, don't they just look like they should be tending bar at uh, at the diviest, scariest place in town. Um, so, I mean, track-wise, you start right out with Shove, Fast and Frightening, right on through Death Wish, till the wheels fall off. I mean, almost all these songs are winners. And um, total huge energy, huge mosh pits. Um, if you... We'll look on YouTube, find their 1991 show from the International Pop Underground at Olympia. Just a crazy-ass show. L7 Smelled Magic. That's my number two because my number one is going to be their major label debut. 30th anniversary reissue just came out, which I had. I've had the CD all along. So um, the reissues on something called Licorice Pizza Records. Um, and so, uh, I got the reissue on black because the color was $15 more and I didn't feel like paying $15 more, but of course you've got Wargasm, Scrap, Pretend We're Dead, Diet Pill, Everglade, even, even the Jennifer Finch songs. I'm not much of a fan of her songwriting. Check out her band, Other Star People, if you want to check out a really bad album from 1999, Slide. Side two, one more thing, Mr. Integrity, Monster, <laughs> the massive shit list. That's like song number 10 on here. This ain't pleasure. I mean, if you're going to buy one L7 album, it's going to be um, Bricks Are Heavy. And if you're going to buy two L7 albums, you're going to buy Smell the Magic as well. So let's do a quick recap. Number seven by L7, Slap Happy. From 1999. My number six, a hot take, Hungry for Stink, 1994. My number five, the recent reunion album, Scatter the Rats, 2019. Number four, self titled debut from 1988. Number three, the beauty process, triple platinum from 1997, that did not actually go platinum. My number two, Smell the Magic from 1990. And my number one, Bricks are heavy from 1992. Tell me what you think.